It's 8 a.m. and I've only had like three cups of coffee this morning. So this will make this all really interesting. So what, yes, we are missing a couple of people. We've had some people call in sick already because they know how to do text messaging. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but no. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll post that link in the, in the, in the Canvas show. So you've got it. All righty. So if you're not here, I just kind of want to walk through this interface with you guys a little bit, and then we're going to give everybody an opportunity to catch up, right? So if you guys just want to like sit back, put your feet up, relax. Coffee ladies open if you want to go grab a cup of coffee before I get going. Okay. All right. So we're going to pause all this before coffee. Does anyone need coffee or anything? All right, just one. All right, so when he steps up, then I'll start the lecture and we'll be like good to go. Yes, he does. And what's the URL? Highline.tegrity.com. That is an awesome URL. All right. So what's your schema for my awesome LDAP instructor, right? So a schema is sort of a hierarchy, right? It's sort of like a tree, which is like really awesome that we have trees here, right? All those things that you guys saw in your core config, so everything that you see in Etsy where? LDAP. Everything that you see here in your core schema, right? Everything that's here is going to be here. So this is everything. So we can actually put in descriptions if we want to, so you can actually see what all this stuff kind of means, right? Now, the interesting part is in the description, they talk about the RFCs, right? So what's an RFC, folks? Request for comments. And this is the fundamental way that the internet was built. You take a guy, he's got a good idea, he writes a real long paper that's about as dry as sandpaper, and then he expects people to read it, and next thing you know, it's an internet standard, right? If it gets approved, if everybody thinks this is a brilliant idea. That's how TCP IP came about, that's how ICMP came about, that's how all of our other protocols came about, and it's no different for the software we use, right? So, you can always see different kinds of processes. You can see if you jump to an attribute type, CNAME record, right? What's a CNAME? In DNS, what's a CNAME? Yes. What can it be used for? For a common name. So instead of typing in www.yahoo.com, you can just type in www. You're basically making a common name for your internal network for something, which is really kind of neat, right? So all these schemas kind of talk about it. Alias object names, CN presentation addresses. So these are all the things that you can do with your process. Common name and all the rest of it. If we wanted to actually create somebody new, right? What's going to end up happening is because we don't have stuff that's managed by the schema yet, because we haven't installed Samba, right? So inside your schema, it's looking for things that are pulled from the template but may not be actually operational for right now, right? And when we get to, when we get to actually doing Samba, you'll see a lot of stuff show back up, right? So when we want to create a template, and this is why something like this is a lot easier, we can make a group mapping for Samba, we can do some send mail aliases if we have send mail going, security groups, simple security objects, we can make a generic user account, collab, generic DNS entry, right? So there's a lot of things that we can do with this to help manage our LDAP and all the other things that go along with it, right, when we're creating a new entry. So if we just want to make a new person, right, generic user account, we want to have a first name, a first name. So let's call him Bob. Why? Because Bob is an awesome name. Someone give me a last name. All right, never mind. Bob Barker. Common name, B. Barker. Password, we can give him a password. Now, here's the interesting part. You can choose to hash that password. 
if you're going to use this, my sincerest recommendation as a security person is that you choose a really good hash to do this, right? You want something that's not easily reverse engineered. When you get into actually cracking open applications and passwords like this, you're going to hear something called of a rainbow table. Anybody hear of a rainbow table before? Rainbows. They're not the beautiful things that arc over the valley after the rain. In this case, what it is is a bunch of passwords, and then they compute all the hashes for those passwords. So you have a list of about 100 million different passwords that people use, and they'll actually compute the hashes underneath all these different encryption schemas to try to figure out, to reverse engineer your password, right? So if you're doing HIPAA, <coughs> if you're doing HIPAA, one of the specifications in there is that you hash people's passwords. If you're doing PCI DSS, the payment credit card people, people in PayPal and all the rest of it, they do the same thing, right? So MD5 is one way of doing it. SHA is another way of doing it. These are the ones that everyone will recognize, right? Choose some kind of different encryption schema but keep it the same across the board. When you get to your company, there'll be some kind of policy, some kind of policy that states, this is how we go ahead and hash digest all of our passwords. We can give them a UID number. We can give them a GID number if we use those. Home directory, all right? A home directory and then a login shell if we want to give them a shell. Most of us will just do a bash shell, right? Because that's what you're used to working in, yep. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. yeah, I know. I haven't created any groups yet. All right? But that's essentially what you do to create a user. All right? No, really? No, I don't want to remember. All right, if we want to create something else, right? If we want to create a generic organizational unit, generic organizational role, LDAP alias, all that kind of, kind of good stuff. So if we want to create an organizational role, the role could be something like human resources. Work phone 1-800. It's a good phone number. Fax machine, if they have one, then comments. Human resources always loves you. Occupant, where they're actually, where they're physically located, their street address, city, state, postal code. Do you recognize all this stuff coming out of the core schema, right? So these are all elements that you can actually put in there for someone. So. Jones street address. And then their postal address, registered address, and then we can go ahead and we can create that object. And then that becomes a new role, right? So we have different kinds of roles. When you're building out your organizational units, just like you would in Active Directory, you want to have roles for where they're at, right? So you're going to have a bunch of people that are in human resources. You're going to have a bunch of people that are in payroll. You're going to have a bunch of people that are in IT, right? You can also do sub roles on this one. So if you have someone who's in IT and they're the security engineering department, right? You'll have IT, but then you'll have a subgroup underneath that for your security engineers. And your security engineers usually have all access all the time to everything else, just like your administrators. But we get to do more cool stuff than system administrators get to do, right? So we can do all this stuff and then we commit it. And it says invalid syntax and invalid attribute value is specified. If we do an invalid attribute, that means it's not in the core schema, right? So we tried to enter something into here that wasn't part of the core schema. So LDAP doesn't know what to do with it, right? So even though it's in LDAP PHP admin, it may not be in your core schema and vice versa. So that's one thing to really know about this program, right? As well, it does make life a little bit easier. If you get this error, then that means it didn't commit all of the values because it wasn't in the core schema. Right? And this is where you want to harmonize your core schema to what's in your LDAP to what you're actually running inside the company. So you're actually going to want to go in and modify your core schema then to make sure of what you've got 
and how you want to do this. Puzzle group. Simple security object. A simple security object is just a user, right? But it's a special kind of user. When you are doing your OUs, just like you do in Active Directory, same thing with LDAP. You want to put people with more privileges and more power underneath their own security group and it makes it a lot easier to manage the roles within the company. Not actually the necessarily the individual users, but the individual roles, right? Because everybody has different roles. So like I'm an instructor, I have more permissions to the system than the students do. However, my boss has even more access to systems I don't even know exist, but I may have access to some systems that my boss doesn't know about because we're down here in the labs, right? There's specific lab systems that my boss doesn't need to have access to. And that's where these security groups come in place, the security object, is how do you define permissions around roles, right? Generic email address, when you guys start getting into doing stuff with Samba and when you get start getting into SendMail, you can literally use this to manage who all gets to do <coughs> what, where, when, why, and how. And that's why you kind of got this right after DNS, right? DNS, linchpin, I can look up IP addresses to names. Now LDAP will let you manage the other things that you've got going across the enterprise as you kind of go through this. So your goal today is to just go ahead and create some objects. Just go poke around. Don't be afraid to press any buttons or anything else. But that's essentially what you've got when you're doing this. It's really, really, truly an interesting way of managing stuff across an enterprise. And that's one of the reasons why you, when you built out your Apache server, I wanted you to do it SSL. Because when you're doing this, if you're doing this from home and it's traveling over the internet in the clear, that's kind of a security issue, right? Because then I can be snipping and pulling all your data out and people will love, love you for doing stuff like this in the clear. Yeah. So always be on your Apache SSL when you're doing this because this will just make it so that it's harder to intercept. If your home computer is compromised, that's a whole different enchilada. All right, and that is one real popular way of getting inside an organization is to compromise someone's home PC, and then when they VPN or SSL into an organization, keystroke, grab, username, password, and boom, all the rest of it. So that's just kind of part of it. So, but the idea is to get you guys at least thinking about this kind of stuff. So go ahead and poke around, let everybody catch up to where we're at. Go ahead and make one of each of the entries that you can here. Right? Because your screen will probably be a little bit different than mine. But just make one. Just get used to it. If you see an error, that's okay. Right? And it usually means that we're not fully finished yet and or you're going to try to be doing something that's not part of your course schema. The object of the day is just get you used to press some buttons so you can go through and do stuff. But does everybody know what Thunderbird is? It's, it's an email program that's over the internet. Right? It comes as part of Mozilla. It's a Mozilla project. So that's what Thunderbird is. Anybody know what POSIX group, uh, POSIX is? POSIX? Right? And POSIX is a form of database. Just so you know. Everybody know what Samba is? Alright. Everybody know what Colab is? Okay. Heard of it? Go look it up. Alright. Generic organizational role, organizational unit. So a role would be your IT security guy. Your organizational unit would be IT. So remember, a role is different than a unit. A unit is an encapsulation. You as a classroom are a unit, all right? But your role is student. So there may be many people in a role as student, but only you as an organizational unit are in CIS 217. So does that make sense on, on how, what the difference between a unit and a role is? A role is some hierarchy that you live in, but a unit is some place that you actually exist. So your role is student, your unit, your organizational unit is CIS 217. All right, does that make sense? You guys good? Any questions? All right, so the goal at the end of the day, be completely caught up, be doing this, go poke around, push some buttons. If you've already pushed some buttons and you've got, and you've made one of everything inside of here, then by all means, watch CNN, watch some other stuff, play the cookie game. <laughs> right, I'm on to you. I feel like mom sometimes, the, the, the baleful eye of Sauron. Urgh. He's not paying attention. All right, any questions? All right. 
what is our URL to access the videos directly? Highline.tegrity.com. Share it with your friends. If someone texts you and says, what did, he, what did he do or what did he mean by this, where you want to send them? Highline.tegrity.com. And that gives you clear access to the videos right off the bat. And I'm really glad you guys have got it. So remember, we're beta testing Canvas. There's a lot of things that are really different about Canvas than there are about Angel. So kind of part of it.